guys, welcome back to Gunman Arts. My name is Joe Barlow and today I've got another project deconstruction for you. This week we'll be taking a look at Whiplash's lightning whips from Iron Man 2. This is part of an ongoing series where I attempt to recreate a visual effect from every single Marvel film. If you want to catch these before I do the project deconstructions, then be sure to follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description. If you've missed it though, don't worry, here it is. All right, so here we are, Iron Man 2. Now, this is the shot we're going to use as the reference today. Um, it's Whiplash from uh, from the scene where he's at the Formula 1. He's walked on the track and uh, got out his whips and started destroying everything. Um, we do see Whiplash a couple of times in the film, but I thought this was going to be the best shot to sort of show uh, those lightning whips. Look at them there, they're great. So what these are, are just like a beam of light in the whip and then sort of lightning coming off and back into it and sort of weaving around it. You can see uh, some sparks, some ground damage there and the occasional flare sort of in the corner. Let's just take a look at that shot again where he's sort of swinging them around but in a 0.21 speed. No, we'll, we'll keep it at 480. 480, really gun was this loaded? Uh, here we go. So here they are in slow motion. You see those sparks as it hits the ground and that light sort of uh, leak around the edge. That's definitely something that uh, I look to uh, replicate in my shot. Um, as well as the sort of lightning whips. You'll notice occasionally as well, they'll sort of arc off to the ground, um, like there, this bit here. So they're, they're reacting like lightning would, um, as well as being in, in like a whip formation. So let's take a look at the project. All right, so here's the footage. Let's take a quick look and see what we've got here. So we've got me uh, with these sort of two green whips in my hand. This was sort of uh, some offcuts of a bit of green fabric I had. Um, I've sort of taped them to sort of two torches uh, to give me a handle to grab hold of and then at the end of each was a, a rock stapled sort of in the fabric to sort of weigh the ends down. They were quite difficult to whip because they were quite light but I did end up getting the footage that I could use. Now the reason I'm in an abandoned car park is because I didn't want to shoot this in my garden where there's loads of grass because that would make the key difficult. Unfortunately, um, I did still shoot with green in the background because uh, apparently I'm an idiot. Because of that, I couldn't get a clean key on these green bits of fabric, which meant I had to change up how I was going to do this. So let's take a look how I uh, made the effect in the end. So originally I wanted to key out the green and then put white behind it and then just overlay it with lightning afterwards. Unfortunately, because of the way I shot it, I couldn't get the key, so I had to draw over the top of it. Now the problem with that is the whips that I made were just too thick. I wanted to make sure they were gonna show up on camera, um, so I did make them a little bit thicker than they needed to be, which probably wasn't gonna be too much of a problem if I did it the way I wanted to, because I could bloom and glow and all that stuff, but I, I had to draw over it. So this is what the lightning looks like without any footage behind it. Um, there's sort of like a overall core, a big glow on it, and then one or two bits of lightning uh, interacting with it around the place, as well as sparks when it goes ahead and hits the ground. Now, I'm gonna turn most of these off to start with, uh, because I'll, we'll get back to those in a moment. The main part of this is actually built up uh, with this layer here. Now this is obviously the core, and the way I got this is uh, I, I literally painted over every single frame. I did start off by drawing over with a mask because the way I wanted to achieve this was through Sabre, which works with masks. But it was taking so long just to go frame by frame, move all those key points and do that for the duration of five seconds, knowing I had to do it all over again for another whip. So what I did, I went into the footage, I, I grabbed the paintbrush and I literally just painted over each frame. I, uh, I had it on a single frame, moved to the next frame, drew on, moved to the next frame and just did that over and over and over again. Um, it sounds a bit tedious but it was much quicker and once I did that I ended up with this brilliant animation of whip. Now because it's hand drawn it, it sort of it isn't quite perfect which actually helps sell the effect of lightning. It's sort of it's got that displacement to it, that sort of wobbliness, which is great. Um, and with this, I went ahead and added a auto trace, which gave me a perfect mask uh, of the of the drawing. And with that mask, I, uh, I added a saber, which obviously can be controlled in various different ways. But this gives me a great glow. Um, I left the core on there because it, it did make it hollow. So those together gave me the core of that whip. 
Now this is great if you want to do a lightning whip like this or, or you know, Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth or even the whip from Kingsman 2. But I wanted a lightning whip, which meant I had to add lightning. And to do that, I just used advanced lightning with a, a couple of different settings. And I chose to do a lightning from my hand to the middle and from the middle to the ground, just to sort of break it up a bit. And I used the, uh, the two-way strike. And this meant it sort of weaves in and out a bit more than it would if I just did the one uh, streak. It also meant I could sort of make it 90 degrees if I needed to and just bend it a little bit more. So I was actually pretty happy with uh, the way the whip looked at this point. I, I think it, it sort of did sell the effect that I was going for, but I did want to do one or two different things just to spice up the, the, the scene a little bit more. I went ahead and added in these little strikes here. We're actually over one at the moment. So let's turn this one on. And these were just where it would interact with the scenery uh, randomly, like that and like that. It's where it sort of arcs towards the floor and then goes away and fades out. And the way I've done that, I've, I've literally just had it in position and then just decayed it away. Um, so we get these things here. You can see they sort of just pop out occasionally. And of course that needs to interact with some sparks. So I use some firecrackers from uh, Action Essentials here. Uh, each time it hits the ground, each time those little things pop out there. And, uh, and that gives us our left whip. Here's what it looks like with the footage uh, behind it. Now I also did, of course, go ahead and do the right whip on top of that, uh, which gave me two lightning whips. Now you'll see occasionally you do see a little bit of green again. That's, that's my problem, that's my fault uh, for shooting with such a thick um, reference whip. What I should have done really is use a bit of like rope, um, may, maybe like some cable or something. It's got a bit more weight to it. It's a lot thinner. The camera would have picked it up still okay, it would have been thinner, I wouldn't have to hide it as much. Um, but that's something to know in the future, that's why you do test shots, um, which this was of course. Now although this is probably enough to sell the effect of lightning whips, I did want it to interact with the ground and uh, interact with myself and a couple of other bits. So I did do a little bit more work than just that. The first thing I did was add damage on the floor. Now this is just a nice texture. Every time it touches the floor, I place one of these down and uh, just sort of started it. Nothing special, but that means I get this every time uh, that lightning hits the floor in any capacity, whether it's one of those strikes there or whether it's the entire uh, whip itself. So another thing I added were these layers that I've named Dance and Flares. Now what these were, were flares that were on a pretty high flicker and I just sort of randomly changed the position every sort of few frames and they sort of dance up and down the uh, the lightning whips and sort of you see there there we go you see them go all over the place and this was just to make them look really sort of volatile and re really uh, aggressive as you know electricity is it's, it's completely unpredictable I did end up duplicating these layers and uh, just popping them throughout every time it sort of interacts with the ground in some capacity uh, just to help sell the effects that when you know that lightning whip is smashed down on the floor um, you know some of the brights happen, some of the bigs happen and you see it there. So another thing I added every time those lightning whips interact with the ground is of course some smoke. There's these scorch marks here and I felt like you needed just a little bit of smoke uh, happening there. Nothing too big, we didn't need flames, we didn't need anything like that. But just, just to show you know, that there's a effect of heat there and these uh, smoke effects here help sell that. So this is what we got at this point. We got those two lightning whips and them interacting with a little bit of the environment through the uh, scorch marks and, and these uh, sparks going on here. Now, I also wanted them to interact with myself and, uh, and the ground around it. Obviously these are two really aggressively flashing things yet nothing else is really affected by that light. So I went ahead and made a mask under me. I actually made two. Uh, one was just a general one in this sort of radius and the other one I uh, focused on if there was like a hit on the floor at any point. Let's just take a look at that one actually. Uh, if there was like a hit then it would go towards that um, just to make that area a little bit brighter. Um, now this you'll see has a very 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 frequent wiggle. Uh, I ended up using a four color gradient. I don't know why I could have just used like any sort of curves or level, but whatever, that's what I ended up with to sort of light that scene and then uh, adding it onto an overlay as well as a, a 
something like that. Like, just sort of crush some of the darker areas. And here is that lightning uh, happening around me. You'll see all the floor is sort of now affected by these aggressively flashing uh, lightning whips. The only other thing I, I needed to do to this is obviously add a bit of light to myself. And, and for this, I used some edge lighting. I went ahead and grabbed a rotoscope myself which you'll see here, and then I went ahead and added a layer style in a glow, pre-composed that, uh, and duplicated it a few different times, added a few different things to it. I've added some directional blur to this, so it replicates these sort of flares that are going on, and, and that's sort of, you know, around me throughout. I've also gone ahead and added a mask to that, and that dances up and down my body, so it sort of looks like it's kind of aggressive and volatile, like the lightning whips. We've got to sort of remember to that we are replicating that light. In fact, let's just quickly solo this out because it's probably not going to play through too great with everything going on. You'll see, you know, things are just happening then. It, it's all over the place, which um, which is what the lightning whips are doing. So that's everything I needed to do to create the lightning whips and add the effects to the surrounding environment. And next up, I wanted to just sort of add some things to the camera. At the end of the scene, I, I, I take a whip to the camera um, so the first thing I had to do there was actually zoom in so it looked like the lightning whip actually does sort of reach the camera um, and, and the way I did that was just literally scaling the positioning. With that I added a bunch of sort of camera movements and uh, a slow zoom out so it sort of slowly pans away from me as I sort of walk towards it. Kind of adds a bit more drama to the shot than just a sort of static tripod shot. So once I actually hit the camera I added this uh, this sort of lightning effect here. Let me just go into this and show you this because it's not very visible in the final shot because there's so many different layers going on. Uh, but that sort of, you know, emits from around the area that I hit it and sort of spreads over the lens of the camera. And it's just meant to look a little bit like, you know, some sort of electricity flows going through it. Like I said, though, you don't really see it because I also added a glass crack to it uh, as well as some sort of noise effects to it because you know this camera has just been destroyed by lightning whips on top of that i also added some sort of digital glitch this helps loop it for instagram and uh, also you know like i said it has been destroyed also i added these digital glitches this helps it loop on instagram but also you know it adds to the effect that it has just been destroyed and this is it this is sort of everything together the only other thing i added was some uh, shakes around when I hit the ground, just to add a little bit of impact to those whips. Um, obviously not something that was in the reference shot, but uh, something I think looked cool. <laughs> so I went ahead and added it. So here is that final shot. Now we are obviously trying to reference the shot from Iron Man 2 here uh, with Whiplash. I don't think we've quite achieved that. Uh, these whips are much thicker, much brighter than his was in the film. Um, but that's not to say I hate these whips. I do really like them. I like the way they're uh, they're aggressive and um, sort of give a little bit more impact than, than his did. Um, we've managed to sort of sell the effects that it's interacting with the floor, I think, and, and myself. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. And that was it, that was Whiplash's Lightning Whips from Iron Man 2. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you wanna catch these before I do the project deconstructions, then be sure to follow me over on Instagram. The link is in the description. Until next time though, thank you and goodbye.